Welcome back to the channel. We are here once again with my Cub Cadet 149. There is a playlist for this thing linked right up there and down in the description so you can go get all caught up on all the happenings on this thing if you want. Today's mission is less Cub Cadet specific and more about Kohler K-series stuff. Right now it is early summer. This thing has gone out mowing probably, I don't know, 10 times, something like that. And I have noticed that it is extra rattly. I'm hearing extra rattle things going on. And no doubt some of that is because a lot of the tins don't fit very well or, or I don't have them aligned very well, however you want to put it. Uh, some of the other tins are just outright broken and or missing fasteners. So like this guy wiggles around all over the place. I think my muffler is going bad, all kinds of things going on. I also noticed that it has an oil consumption problem, which seems to be kind of coming and going, which is weird. Right now, it's not dropping a puddle and I haven't noticed it's smoking, but it did dawn on me that I have never checked the valve clearance in this thing, and that it is weeping some oil out of the breather on the side of the block. If you're not that familiar with small engine things, most small engines do not run hydraulic valve lifters. So this guy has solid lifters that require manual adjustment every now and then. The Kohler service manual says to do it every 500 hours. I'm not sure that it's ever been done on this one. I have put probably, well, we'll say between five and 700 hours on it since I have owned it myself as a grown up and I have never done it. So it's certainly time to look at it. This also in part could explain our oil consumption problem because the valve cover where the lifters live is also the crankcase ventilation system. This doesn't have a, a PCV, there is no positive ventilation. So it just dumps crankcase pressure to the atmosphere out of the side of the block. And there's some stuff that can go on in there that can cause it to not drain oil and leak excess oil. So I think it's a good idea to just check both those things out and see where we're at. And the guy we're going for is right back here. That's actually the stud that comes out of the motor that holds the valve cover on. And that is the outer valve cover. Realize it's difficult to see, and it will probably remain somewhat difficult to see, but it'll get a little bit easier to service with the air cleaner off. And of course, if we remove the carburetor, then it'd be really easy to service, but I don't really want to do that. Moving the air cleaner is pretty straightforward. Let's have your wing nut. Element. And then you will find three screws in here, or in my case, two, because that guy took off on me a while ago, and I'm still not sure where he is. We just bust those guys out of there and then that base plate for the air cleaner will come off and give us a little bit extra space. This will all be covered in oil and grease, probably on yours too, because there is actually a vent up here. So to some extent that is normal. However, I don't want all that dirt and crap in the motor. So I'm just going to take a few minutes to wipe mine down before I go any further and get some cardboard under the tractor. So it's not a mess you can see from space. So I've almost immediately changed my mind here. The access back here behind the bowl to the valve cover is just too extreme for me to really want to mess with. I can overnight a carburetor gasket from Amazon for six bucks. So that is gonna be worth the effort to do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop the carburetor off. I believe we just have a little spring clip ball in here. And I'm really hoping I don't destroy minimal destruction, I believe. Oh, so whatever little C-clip was holding it on the other side just fell off into the abyss. So a moment ago, there was a clip on that guy that is now gone. We'll have to hopefully dig it back out of there. You can place your bets for how easy that'll be. We have two bolts back here that hold the carburetor on, and they are also cut for a flathead screwdriver. <clears throat> Except they are tighter than this flathead is wanting to turn. So we're gonna have to get on those with a wrench. Probably 9 16 Nope, half. <clears throat> I've broken that guy loose. Might be able to get on with screwdriver. Mm, not so much. Mm. Probably still faster than the wrench. Same idea over here. Assuming my wrench doesn't round it off, which it is. There we go. And just keep working it with the screwdriver. Seems like the most logical thing to do. I'm also gonna pop my fuel line. I almost always park this guy with an empty bowl, so I run it out of gas almost every time I park it. So hopefully not a ton of gas will pour out of there. Get my hose push off pliers, which I may or may not even need here, but they are nice to have. Yep, just broke that fitting straight off. That is a plastic fitting, which surprises me. Anyway, that is what I was trying not to do with these, but oh well. Well, good news. That is just a 1 8 NPT by half inch 90. 
and I was able to, again, once again, Amazon overnight some. I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet, but I'm breaking the cardinal rule of mowing season, which is we don't take the tractor down unless it takes itself down. So I wanna make sure I get all these parts coming as quickly as I can. I might be able to find some of the stuff cheaper locally, but who cares? It'll all be here tomorrow and I don't have to worry about it. Also against all odds, I found the circlip that fell off of that rod, which was cool. But what I'm discovering with the carburetor here is I have the bolt on the other side of it all the way removed because it was the easiest to get all the way out and the sides of the carburetor are actually forked. So if I wanted to remove the choke cable here, I could actually just slide the carburetor off of this bolt, but I do not want to remove that choke cable. So since I've got it so loose, I can just gain a little better access to it to take it on out. Oh, also I'll link everything I'm getting from Amazon in the description for you. So if you need the stuff, you can go get it too. Okay. I believe that's just about out of there. Yep. Those are probably going to be a good time to get back in. But boy, that choke cable really keeping things in there. Anyway, that's good enough. Carburetor can just hang out like that. Oh, and I did rip the gasket. So good thing we got more coming. Boy, that's like recessed in. Oh, that's a part of the tin. Okay. I thought that was recessed into the block. I'm like, wow, that's weird. Looks like a good portion of it is still stuck to the carburetor. And it's all super old and cracked up and stuff anyway. Might be the original one for all I know. All right, now we can get down to what we came for. Good news is somebody's been in here at some point because this is actually caved in. The valve cover is not supposed to be caved in, so somebody got it too tight. But that does mean somebody has probably thought about the valves at least once before. Some towel shoved in there. And now I can finish cleaning around this guy. And I definitely do not want to take that governor arm off, although it would make it a little bit easier to deal with this. Might pull the spring. Yeah. At least I can get down this corner and clean it up a little better now. Now we can finally get down to what we're here for. Not 3 8 7 16 Yep. Okay, there's a washer on there. I'm gonna try not to drop. And our valve cover will just come on off because this was not glued down or anything. And it is mighty dirty on the inside. So if nothing else, it's cool we're doing this just to address that. This fibery stuff right here is the actual element that's actually a filter. I have a new one of those because they always kind of look like crap. There should be like some sheet metal bits and bobs in here. Or I guess that's part of the gasket. You can see that guy is just destroyed. They don't look good when they're new either, but that one's just roached. And FYI, that stuff's expensive too. The service kit for this was like 30 bucks. This little rubber standoff I could probably reuse, but I have a new one, it's part of a kit. And not that it's likely to matter too much, but you can see that guy's all swollen and bulged. Uh, they should not look like that. It's also starting to get pretty firm. You can see all the crap that is collected on it. So yeah, no doubt it's a good thing I'm servicing it. There's a cross in here that kind of acts like a PCV. It kind of keeps ports closed. Yeah, see those two ports back there? And that one has been in there so long that it's actually got wear on it. I will probably install it the other way around. Before I go any further, because this bit right here comes off too. That is what I would call the, I don't know, I guess breather cover, I don't know. I'm gonna clean the crap off of it before we open up a big hole in the side of the motor or a bigger hole. Alrighty, so that's about all the better I'm gonna be able to do. Most of the valve cover gasket is still on that piece, but I also wanna take just a minute to show you something important. You'll see, or I hope you can see, it is stamped top right there. And there's actually a little hole right down there. That is an oil drain hole. You definitely want to make sure that that's pointing down and you want to make sure that this is you know nice and open and able to drain when you get everything reassembled that is one of the reasons that this being messed up will give you an oil consumption issue so if that hole's plugged it'll just start overflowing out of the baffle here cool magnet was able to take her right off you can maybe or maybe not see it's actually got oil immediately behind it stripping oil Let's see if we can get it worked on out without moving this throttle bracket would be cool whether or not I like it I think that throttle pivots about to come off 7 16 I hope there's nothing elaborate to this thing I do see this stop is moving as I do this there 
and the nut just fell off. Like a little tiny sheet metal shim. I'm not real sure where it went. Actually, it wasn't a nut, it was a spacer. And it is also like machined. So I'll probably have to spend some time figuring out how all that goes back together later, which is one of the reasons I didn't want to take it apart, but it is what it is. I did this on my 1650 like 12 years ago, and I do not remember it being this big of a deal. Maybe I was less gun shy about taking stuff apart, but after a quick wipe down, that's the baffle plate. Get a little better view of the hole in the bottom of it there. It does actually have splash baffles behind it just so the lifters don't throw oil directly at those ports. And fortunately for us, the entire gasket came off of the block. So I don't have to spend a hundred years scraping that off of the block anyway. Make one final attempt to wipe dirt away from the big hole in the side of the motor. Somewhat by proxy, I'm also going to clean up this gasket face. Since the whole gasket came off, I don't think it's going to need much more than just a simple wipe down. Before I put the new gasket on, I'll probably hit it with some brake clean or something. Alrighty, so now you can see valves, valve springs, lifters. And the lifters have flats cut on them and there are nuts on the top of them that we can adjust. First thing we need to do is rotate the motor such that we're on top dead center. And lucky for us, since we have a starter generator, this motor is pretty easy to turn over. We can just grab the pulley on the generator and crank it over and watch the valves move until it comes up on compression. Then it gets a little more challenging. Okay, so that's the exhaust valve closing. It's the intake valve closing. We're coming up on compression. Okay, and there the exhaust valve is just starting to open. So we want to back off. And when I am rocking the pulley, we don't have a whole lot going on. I believe the automatic compression release acts upon the exhaust valve somehow, but I don't think it's doing it right now. And I will have to go double check my book here in a minute, but I think the exhaust valve clearance is like 17 to 19. It just so happens that I have a 17 to 19 feeler gauge in my hand. We're gonna see that just barely has drag on it all the way across. So that could use maybe a little adjustment, but it's not bad. The intake's supposed to be so I have a seven to nine. I cannot get in there. Let me make sure I'm not doing something crazy. Weirdly, the 7 to 9 feels about like the 7 to 19 on the exhaust, and that's not good. Or I'm too dumb to do this. And 7 to 9 is my smallest option, meaning I don't have a feeler gauge that gets smaller than that. I'm probably going to have to get where you are and get a better eyeball on that. So the exhaust valve is, sure enough, pretty much perfectly on the outside edge of acceptable. The range is 17 to 19 thousandths. The intake, however, is at zero clearance. And that is completely not what I expected to find. So the valve and the lifter are at zero. There is no lash adjustment there, and it is supposed to be seven to nine thousandths. So that's bad. If I'm honest, I could probably tighten up the exhaust just a touch, but I probably won't be able to get it much, if any better than it is right now. And I'd rather have it a little bit on the sloppy side than on the tight side. I'm a little curious how that intake would have become tight too, but it is what it is, I guess. The adjustment procedure is pretty straightforward. Half inch wrench goes on the lifter or the bottom of the lifter, and you can rotate it in the bore if you need to. 7 16 wrench goes on the top, and that is your actual adjustment. So in my case, I want to tighten that if I can. There we go. It's moving. It's moving really stiffly. Kind of makes me wonder. I hope it's not out of adjustment somehow. Assuming that that is on the base circle of the cam, let's hope I can get a feeler gauge in it now. I can. Okay. So I have my feeler gauge in and it has an okay amount of drag on it. And that is the seven to nine gauge. I have my 10 and 12 gauge and hopefully it won't fit. And these gauges actually are ground on an angle. There you see where it says 10 and 12. This side is 10, this side is 12. So I'm trying to slip the 10 side in. I was not able to a moment ago. Nope. So here's my seven and nine. And on the nine side, there's just a little bit of drag. So if I'm honest, that's probably just a touch too loose. But again, since we appear to be developing a tight condition, I'd rather have it loose than tight. But all in all, what I've discovered here is that 
My valve condition was probably not the source of any rattling or anything, but that was definitely not good. Since that was at zero, as the motor gets hotter, the parts grow, so that would have been holding the intake valve open and possibly killing some performance, which would actually kind of be cool because this thing has felt a little doggy for, I don't know, the last few years now. And I just assumed because it was because the motor's getting tired, which it probably is, but hanging an intake valve open in touch would do it too. So at least now I know that's not gonna be an issue. So now my next move is really just kind of the reverse of what you've already seen. I'm gonna clean up my gasket surfaces. Again, um, almost all of the gasket material came off with the baffle. So I'll probably just hit that with a, you know, a rag and some brake clean and clean it up just a little bit, or you know, maybe get on it with a little bit of steel wool or something like that just to shine it up some and then commence to putting it back together. And while I'm at it, I'll clean up all the baffles and all that stuff too, and you know, dealer's choice, however you may want to do that yourself. So I spent a good bit of time getting everything all cleaned up, including cleaning up our baffle and our valve cover. I even took a little bit of time to straighten out the valve cover so it's not all convex anymore. Concave, I guess, depending on which side you want to look at it. And I also did what I could to get the flange straight the flatter and the straighter those two are the better they will seal i didn't do anything fancy there it's just a little bit of hammer on the back of my vice no big deal really so now i'm just going to take to it with a shop vac and use the shop vac to suck the towels out and hopefully you know pick up anything that stayed behind all right so i did the carburetor hole just so i don't have to think about it anymore i can just yank this towel out whenever i'm ready and i found that it's been helpful to sometimes have the governor one way or another. So I'm just using a clamp to hold it up out of my way. Just gonna wet a rag with some brake clean. Just go around the edge of this guy. Just try and get any, you know, grease like that off. Speaking of prep, so I was cleaning this guy up. I mentioned maybe putting it in the other way. I don't think I wanna do that. And in fact, I think I wanna try and come up with a new one of these for next time. It's got a, chunk missing out of it there which is probably not awesome and it also looks like it has been run so much that it's actually made like wear creases where the flaps flap up and down i don't believe it'd be a good idea to flip this over and have those creases start operating the other direction and this thing is like a like a pop can thickness it's really thin spring steel so i think the wiser move is just to replace that guy the next time we're in here i also happen to think about it it makes sense that it's losing valve clearance if it's been working on the valve seat the valve would be dropping that could be a standard wear thing. And for the valve to have only dropped, what, 10 thousandths in God only knows how many years is really not such a terrible thing. All the same, I may start running an additive in the fuel just to be a little nicer to the valve seats. Here's our new Easter basket stuffing that you can see. Yeah, that's brand name Kohler stuff. It's already falling apart even in the packaging. This stuff's just not very robust at all. And this thing's like $10 by itself, which is disappointing. So fortunately, the hole in the bottom of that guy, it's so small, I don't think much of that would go through. But I do think I'm gonna take my scissors and trim off some of the extraneous crap there. What I'm gonna use to grease up the gaskets is this stuff. It's called assembly goo. And this is exactly what it is for. And it's almost like a wax. This is like the heavy variety. I guess there are you know, different grades of it. Now the basic trick here is take a finger, take your gasket and get it greased up. There's really not a whole lot more to say. There's one gooed up and the other. So now we should be ready for assembly. That guy put on like so. Sure, I'm going through a lot of work to not take that throttle cable off. And I was afraid of taking it off because I didn't want to lose the adjustment, but I don't think the adjustment's right there anyway. Let's see if I that just gave it enough freedom to move. I don't have to take it all the way out of there. Make sure to pay attention that my top is toward the top. Okay. I am officially irritated. 95% chance I dropped that. Somehow I did not. The project's not done yet. Okay, that was much less of a gong show. <laughs> oh boy, dropping a razor blade into an abyss. There we go. Try this again. Our Easter basket, which I'm noticing has like a mesh on one side. I'm assuming that mesh goes backward, so like so. 
There's a little chunk of hose, rubber bushing or whatever you want to try and call the thing. Other gasket. And then this guy, you want to make sure that little lip is up, you know, the little mouth. It even has top stamped in it right there, which I did not notice before. Lock washer that came off of it. Regular old hex nut. You may want to try and be a little delicate. This is just a T-handle with a socket on it, so not going to put a lot of torque on it at all. Would like to get it tighter than that. Okay, that's tight enough that I can't just turn it by hand. It's like another eighth of a turn past that. So, okay, valves adjusted, breather reassembled. Let's see if I can get this choke bracket back on without dropping everything 35 times. I don't think that was the right screw. The screws for the air cleaner are almost identical. This guy's just a touch longer, I think. And the only real way I could tell them apart other than length is I put blue Loctite on the air cleaner screws the last time I was on them, and there is no Loctite on this guy. There we go. I'll have to adjust that with the carburetor back on it. It's what I was trying to avoid, but of course it didn't work out that way. Went to pick up the carburetor and I'm noticing there's a hilarious amount of throttle shaft play. I don't think it really matters because this thing lives its life at wide open throttle, but it's not great. So my parts have arrived, but it has been long enough that I've been away from this thing that I need to look at my pre-existing parts and figure out how this all worked. And it wasn't all that obvious when I took it apart anyway. Part of that is because I think this thing has extra parts. Like this bracket here, I think is like a Cub Cadet appendix. It's a vestigial organ it does not need. And even the exploded diagram, I can't tell what this actually does. In this application, I think it's just a spacer. And this is all part of the throttle linkage pivot. Believe how this works. We have this spacer that came off, goes directly on that guy. Then we have this thin waffle washer. I think that's probably the best angle that you're going to get of it. It's waffle shape. I think it actually acts as a thrust washer. I believe he goes on that face. And this tray is magnetic, so things are going a little weird. That is the bolt that holds it on. There's a flat washer on the front of it. A lock washer behind it. So I think the way this works, so we put it together, something like that, and our throttle pivot goes in between those things and it allows it some freedom of motion to, you know, still move, I guess. We're gonna try it. This bracket may do something on like a stationary generator application or something, like maybe there's a return spring that goes in that hole or something, I don't know. But even in the exploded diagram for this motor, I don't see what it's supposed to do. So, eh, I'm not gonna sweat it too much, at least until I find out I need to. The other small thing is that E-clip. That's the guy that pretty much just fell off and it's trying to blow away in the wind. I just crimped it down to be a little bit smaller so it crushes down on this shaft a little bit better. I think that'll work out. If not, I have some other Eclipse we can try. So let's start hanging parts back on it and see if this whole theory is accurate. I'm just going to try and assemble it all to this bracket. If nothing else, just to like hold it together and see if we can get it started in the block. There we go. This thing was oriented that way originally. So I guess that's how I'm going to put it back. I'm going to torque this down pretty tight. Let's see if the throttle still moves. It does. So, okay then. I suppose the next thing to concern ourselves with will be getting our new nipple in there. As promised, got a nice brass guy. But it did occur to me that this carburetor is probably pot metal or at best aluminum. So I'm going to have to be pretty careful to not tighten things down so much that I break anything. Whether or not it really needs it. I'm gonna give it like a wrap or two of Teflon tape. I did already try this fitting out and it fits in the carb pretty tight. Like it fits well, I should say. So I don't think it's gonna need a lot. Get her screwed in. And of course, pointed up. Right there by hand, it's getting tight to turn. Get a wrench on it. And it won't be much fun to tighten it down more later, but I'd rather do that than break the carb. All right, that's pretty much up and down. May as well reattach that governor's spring. Get the governor from flopping out around our way. I think it was in this top hole here. And if it wasn't, that's where it is now. Plenty of tension, everything moves. I'll have to tighten this back down later. Seems a little loose. For now, we'll do that. 
I already prepped all my gasket surfaces. I also spent some time surfacing the carburetor flange itself pretty nicely. You can see it's, to you it'll look shiny. In reality, it's just clean. All I did there was put a piece of 400 grit wet dry on a nice flat surface and just worked this back and forth for a while until it came up nicely. Gasket, make sure we take our rag out of course. Make sure it's gonna fit, looks nice. Just gonna grease it up nicely on both sides just so it is easier to remove later, I hope. And it'll of course hold it there while I'm working, which is really the whole point of the stuff. All right, that is super ridiculously gooey. Port match on that is not the greatest, but it's okay, I guess. Obtain our carburetor screws, screwdriver. And since our carburetor is forked, I'm just gonna try and start this rearward one. I'm not sure if I did it in this order before or not. There we go. Just mess with my choke a little bit to buy me a little slack there. Okay, so that worked out. Other bolt. Come on, come on. If you weren't quite able to see what I did there, I actually had to put the bolt all the way on the carburetor, all the way down to the flange, and then get it on in there. All right, so I've got those both side. I'm just gonna try and get in there with a wrench if I can. And just try and get them, you know, tight, but not too tight. I don't wanna break anything. All right, it's as much as I dare. I can always put more on later. And I've noticed my governor has quite a bit of wear in it right there. That might be something I'll need to touch up later with the welder or something, just put a zap on it there and clean it up. But not a today problem. What is gonna be a today problem is getting that E-clip on without launching this all into space. And I think my best bet for doing that is exactly as you're seeing it, is just to poke it out the backside. Move you guys out of my way a little bit. It is tight enough now that I might need a set of pliers to get it on. Probably gonna need the dexterity of not having a glove on. Nope, no pliers needed, but it is on there nice and tight. Cool beans, get it snapped back to our carburetor, which might, no, no, no tools required. Cool, check our throttle. Good deal, that's all the way off. Or that's no throttle, that's all throttle. That guy needs readjusted. Let's see if my three sizes two big screwdriver will fit it. It does. All right. So that is wide open throttle. And that's just sort of where that wants to be. Okay. Works for me. Still got choke. Yep. Well, it's a small miracle, but I think we're getting to the end. Put our fuel line back on. Probably the next thing. And I noticed it doesn't fit this barb quite as tightly as the old one, which really isn't a bad thing. That's why we have a clamp. She ain't going nowhere. We're gonna turn the fuel back on, see if we get gas spraying everywhere. And while I work on the rest of this, I'll just leave the fuel open, see if it's gonna leak. Next up is our air filter adapter. I should have thought to get a new gasket for it, but I didn't. I also misplaced one of the mounting screws for it earlier this year, and I thought it would turn up by now, and it is not. This is gonna be a two screw affair. Normally you'd have to pay extra for that kind of thing. I'm also going to dig my craftsman here, magnetize it up. All this is is a magnet in a box. It's just handy to have around so you can magnetize, demagnetize things. Again, you could just use a regular magnet for this, but it being in a box makes it harder to lose. It was a few dollars, not a big deal. Let's see if we have achieved our goal. We have. These screws already have some like old dry blue Loctite on them. It is still gonna do the job. And I do that so they don't rattle out and go through the motor because that would not be good. Bigger screwdriver, put some torque on them. But again, it's going into that carburetor casting, so take it easy. There we go. Air cleaner, I suppose air filter, air cleaner lid, wing nut, and our parts tray is empty. That must mean we're done. I suppose the next thing to do is to see if it'll light off. Something else I should mention too. I checked the oil on this kind of mid project and it actually did not use any the last time out or the timeout before that. So that oil consumption issue may have just been a thing for the first few cuttings of the spring. But at any rate, we still have, you know, our brand new breather element, everything's clean, everything's assembled correctly. So shouldn't have any more trouble there if we were having trouble due to that. I'm gonna let it sit there and run for a couple of minutes and just let it put a little bit of heat in the oil and then I'll bottle it up and see if I think it's hitting approximately the correct RPM. It's been a few minutes, I'll give it some throttle and see how it behaves. Nice. 
Ah, the chatter's still there. I don't know how if you'll be able to hear it or not. Definitely increases with RPM. risk of blowing my hearing out, I'm going to go around it with my stethoscope a little bit. But from me just listening, it definitely sounds like it's more top end than bottom end, which makes sense because we were, we were short on valve clearance on an intake valve, so the seats are probably getting pretty worn, or the valves themselves are getting pretty worn. And it sounds like it's louder on the exhaust valve than the intake valve to me. So really this is just signs of things I already knew were coming, like this thing needs an engine rebuild, which is not a surprise to anybody. Hopefully it's got another season or two in it. I try not to be too hard on it, but we'll see how it goes. Speaking of going, it's about that time. So always I appreciate you guys stopping in for this video. We will catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.